Hi, welcome to our Global Surge Worship Center. We are entering and continuing our series on dangerous prayers. And today we're going to be talking specifically about two dangerous prayers that I believe should be part of every believer's regular prayer life. The first one, the first dangerous prayer, is about sharing and grabbing the opportunity to share our faith. Let me illustrate it this way. Everybody knows Coca-Cola. Now, for all of our YouTube friends, this is not a paid membership or advertisement or sponsorship. This is simply from the Sorry Sorry story and pick this up from the grocery. This size Coca-Cola very clearly is, is made for personal consumption. The, the designers and the marketing team put this, they measured it out, they said this is typically what most people would enjoy, and you drink it for personal enjoyment. You, you, you have just enough to fill one glass full of ice, and it's quite refreshing. Now, the marketing team put together this big one, this big 1.5, two liter Coca-Cola. Now, this was never designed to be used by one individual. It was never designed to be consumed by one individual. The whole purpose of having the large bottle of Coke, the large size, was for sharing. That's the whole design. The whole purpose is to be shared with friends, to be shared with family, to be shared with people you enjoy spending time with. And that's the whole design and purpose of the two liter Coca-Cola. It was never meant or designed to be, to be a solo user, never for one individual to be drinking it. In the same way, our spiritual life should be like the two liter bottle of Coca-Cola. We should want and live our life in such a way that we would want to be sharing our faith. So how does the dangerous prayer fit in? The dangerous prayer fits in this way. The dangerous prayer is that we would start praying this way. Lord, let me seize, let me grab the opportunity to share my faith. Let me look for opportunities, not only just to say, sana if ever, but really to say, Lord, give me the opportunity, help me recognize the opportunity where I can share my faith. Give me that time, give me that freedom, give me the opportunity to share my faith. Now, for many of us, that can become very uncomfortable. And the reason it becomes uncomfortable is because if we begin to share our faith, other people may know or become aware that we're believers, that we're different than other people. And it changes the way and it impacts our relationships. It can impact the way we're treated at work. It impacts the way that our neighbors might treat us once they know that you're a believer. It might change the way that your family treats you. If you're in a relationship, maybe you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend that's an unbeliever, it will drastically change if your boyfriend or girlfriend knew that you were a believer. And if we begin sharing our faith, and we start asking God for us to take these steps of faith, these dangerous prayers, to fulfill this dangerous prayer of sharing our faith, then I think our life would drastically be changed. The way we view ministry, the way we view our life would be drastically changed. Most of our prayers, and I want you to look back. Think back, if you could look at a, at a record of your past prayers over the past couple of weeks. Have your prayers been about you or about other people? If you're like me, most of my prayers, and, I, and I'm doing everything I can to change my prayer habits, but mostly my prayers tend to be about me. Lord, will you protect me? Will you protect my family? I mean, I'll include my family in that. Will you protect my family? Will you help me make a decision? Will you help me do this? And I think when we start to change the way we pray and begin to pray in such a way that, God, would you work through me for your glory instead of for me for my benefit? I mean, that's a, major, that's a major point. Lord, please work through me for your glory, not for me, for my benefit. And when we begin to pray like this, we start to see how our view and our take on life is. We start to view our friendships differently. We start to view the way we, we treat our coworkers or even our managers or boss or supervisor. We treat them differently when we begin to realize that that is an opportunity for us to share the gospel. And those are prayers we should take. Paul wanted the gospel to be spread. He said in his letter to 2 Thessalonians, in, in the 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, and this is a letter to a church. He said, For other matters, brothers and sisters, speaking to believers, brothers and sisters, pray for us 
that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you. Paul wanted the gospel to be spread rapidly. He didn't want it to just to slowly drip. He wanted someone to rapidly open up the gospel and begin sharing it with those around. He intended and wanted every believer. He wanted this young church, the Thessalonican church, he wanted this young church to follow in his footsteps where he was rapidly sharing the gospel. See, our prayers should be more than just what we want, but should be an important part, and our lifestyle should be an important part of fulfilling the Great Commission. What if your prayers started to change to be more like this? Lord, in the Great Commission, when you spoke to your disciples before you left, before you, you left for the first time and you're coming back again, it, when you said, Lord, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, Lord, I want to be part of that. Give me the opportunity. Help me see that opportunity. Grab that opportunity to share my faith. Paul wrote to Timothy, a young pastor, and he said in his second letter to Timothy, chapter 4, verse 2, he says, Timothy, preach the word. Preach the word and be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage. And with great patience and careful instruction. Paul wanted Timothy to always be prepared. In the same way, we should always be prepared. Just like Paul told Timothy to be prepared in season and out of season, we should constantly be prepared as well. Now, in my Bible... I keep our John 3.16 card. On the back, it has all the verses. I like to keep this on my person. I keep it in a notebook in my pocket, and I like to share this and have this ready so that I as well can be prepared in season and out of season. I want to follow in the, the footsteps of believers in the past who shared the gospel. If someone didn't share the gospel with our family generations ago, I guarantee you I wouldn't be here today. And so I'm thankful that someone took the step of faith Ask God to fulfill a dangerous prayer in sharing their faith. And I believe you should do the same. I should do the same as well. Include this dangerous prayer in your regular life. Now, the second dangerous prayer. The second dangerous prayer is, is one that, that I began praying several years ago. And the second dangerous prayer is that God would actually close doors of opportunities that we see around us. And I'm not talking about sharing the gospel. I'm talking about very commonly with what we're facing uh, in, in business or at work or, or opportunities at school is it's very common in our culture to want to grab an opportunity, to seize an opportunity, and opportunities start popping up all around us. It's very common. But I started saying a prayer several years ago that I said, God, I, I, I pray that you would actually close the doors. Let me, let me tell you my story on that. Right as I was about to graduate college, I was in Bible college. I was getting married a few months after, two months after I graduated from Bible college. And, uh, and I knew that after college, I had to get a job. Now, what was very interesting is I had a pastor approach me one quarter, one semester before I was set to graduate. And he approached me and said, hey, Luke, I want to interview you. I want to interview you about a potential position at our church. Now, I was pretty excited because this was a great church. It was a thriving church, a growing church. Uh, they had all the cutting-edge technology at that time. Uh, they were in a very great part of the country, a very exciting city. And, uh, and as I began to interview with the pastor, I met several of the staff members in Yung Team Nila. And, and I'm sitting with the staff, and I'm talking with them, and I, and I began to realize that the staff was actually paid pretty well. And so here I am, young college student, excited about a potential career in this church. And I was, I was very much looking forward to joining this church. And so we began the interview process. Interview number one was over the phone. Interview number two, I flew down and met with the church and the pastor and attended the weekend service. And I began to meet all the different staff members and, and looked at the opportunities of joining this team. And it was during this time that I began to pray, God, this looks really great. And this has to be your will. I'm in Bible college. I'm training to be involved in ministry. And you give me a ministry opportunity that is probably the best deal I'm going to get. But then I started to pray, God, if this is not your will, I pray that you shut it down. I pray that you close that door. Slam it shut. Don't even let it crack open. Just close it down completely. And the Lord did. I didn't get that job. 
After my weekend interviewing with them, I, um, I didn't get a call back. It just didn't work out. And uh, it didn't work out. And in my mind, I was a little disappointed because it's not really what I wanted. I, I mean, I prayed that God would close the door if it wasn't for me. But deep down, I was like, but God, don't close that door. I mean, keep, keep that one open for me. And what I realized was I needed to start changing the way I was praying. I was praying in such a way, Lord, this is great. I can't believe you gave this to me. This is, this is amazing. What an opportunity. And what I should have been praying and what I did begin praying was, Lord, if this is not for your glory, if this is for me and not for you, then shut it down. Help me get over my own emotional excitement. Help me get over my own ego. Help me get over my own status symbol that would come with having such a great ministry opportunity and such a great job right out of college and close this door. And when he did, it really shifted the way that I started praying. And I continued that prayer. And over the next several years, God opened several doors and he closed a lot of doors. He opened doors that I, that I walked through and he closed doors that I didn't even have the opportunity to walk through. And, uh, and it was a good time. It was somewhat difficult because my ego was, was broken down to a lower level. I had to start realizing that I wasn't in it for me. I was in it for the kingdom. I needed to start doing what God wanted, what was best. And God wanted what was best for me. And I needed to follow what God's will was for my life. And that's a dangerous prayer. Lord, close down and shut opportunities. That's not easy. Most of us are praying for opportunities. Most of us are praying that God would give us that job, that we would give us that promotion, that he would give us that family or that, that person that we're falling in love with or give us that, that situation or that car or, or, or that business or that investment or, or whatever. And we, we start praying for these things because that's what we can see. What's great about God is God sees beyond all of that. He sees beyond what we need and he sees what would glorify him. And when we pray this dangerous prayer, I'm saying, God, close opportunities and close doors that I should not go through. Frustrate me. Do not allow me to even move towards that. That begins to change the dynamic of our relationship with God. It changes the way that we pray. Now, we're in an interesting season right now. And I use the word season on purpose. Because seasons change. And as we're entering into the Burr months, September, October, November, this is a new season. And as we enter into the new year, that'll be a new season as well. And the months after that will be a new season as well. And maybe you're entering into a season of decision-making, a decision-making season. Maybe it's a season that lasts a couple weeks. Maybe it's a season that lasts a couple of months. It could be a season that lasts several years. But, but these seasons of decision-making um, typically come with major adjustments. Maybe it's an adjustment at work. Maybe you're having an adjustment with college or high school. Maybe you're having an adjustment because you're the parent like us and having to make major adjustments because your kids are now studying from home. And all these major adjustments then begin to change the way we pray because we're making major decisions. Maybe you're looking at a business opportunity and you need to make some very big business decisions. Maybe it's a big investment decision. Maybe it's whether to move your family from one side of the city to the other or to another country. These are big decisions. And very commonly, when we face these kind of decisions, we begin to pray, God, show me what to do. God, show me what to do. God, show me what to do. And God, show me what to do by Thursday, because I have a deadline. <laughs> and we kind of put God on a timeline or a deadline, and we're looking at God saying, God, this is great. I'm really hoping that I'm following your will, but I need to know really soon. If you could just text me, that'd be great. If you let me know tomorrow, put a notification in, in my feed so I can know that when I wake up tomorrow, I have that little red light, real red blinking, and I can, okay, good, I have a notification from God. I can check up on it. It's a yes or a no. But God doesn't always work that way. And if you look back in the seasons that you've already gone through, just look back, just spend, just spend a minute, think about it. Where was I six months ago? What season was I facing? Where was I a year ago, two years ago, five years ago? If you look back into the seasons of your life, you will notice that God brought you through every single season on purpose, for a purpose. And if you look closely, you'll see how each season that God brought us through, that God has brought you through, that God has brought me through, 
has been for his glory. It's been for his purpose. It's been to glorify him. And the season you're facing now is designed and purposed to glorify him. So, Proverbs chapter 2, and I love Proverbs. Proverbs, the first several chapters of Proverbs are just full of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 2, starting in verse 6, 7, and 8, says this, For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is totally blameless. For he guards the course, the path, the season. He guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. What I love is verse 7. He holds victory in store for the upright. When God sends you through and walks you through and guides you through a season, especially a season of decision making, where you have to decide this opportunity or this opportunity, that God has already planned victory for us, victory for you if we follow in his steps, if we follow the path that he designed for us, if we listen to the wisdom that he has already given to us, and the wisdom may be coming from people around you, speaking into you with a godly wisdom, saying, this is what God has for you. Why would he have allowed this and this and this to happen if he didn't have this and this and this planned out for you? Maybe it's a relationship, and God's saying, you need to walk away from that relationship. Maybe it's other people speaking into you, saying, You need to step away from that boyfriend, that girlfriend, that potential relationship. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a career choice. And maybe God is saying, don't stop because it's hard, but stop because I'm trying to frustrate you. I'm trying to close down that door. That's a dangerous prayer. Lord, frustrate me. Lord, shut down that door. Lord, close that opportunity. There have been times where I have prayed for God to answer and give me an answer, and I've always wanted the answer to be yes because I wanted it for me. And I've been changing my prayers to saying, God, do what's best for you and your kingdom. Work through me. Don't just do things for me. Lord, allow my life to be designed and and, and architect in such a way that when my life is finished, people will see that it was part of the path for God's kingdom. And when I do that, I fulfill the greater purpose of my life, which is to glorify the king and glorify God. So how do I do this? How do I begin praying in such a way that is not only dangerous, but fulfills God's purpose? The first is praying for the opportunity to share the gospel. In your life, when you look at the, at the relationships that you have, which God has given you on purpose, God has not given you friends that are unbelievers or family members that are unbelievers by accident. He did that on purpose so that you can share the gospel with them. Make the first dangerous prayer of saying, Lord, give me the strength and help me see the opportunities you continue to place before me to share my faith. Don't be the small Coca-Cola. Be the big Coca-Cola that is designed to share with other people. Pray for the gospel. Pray for God-ordained moments for opportunities for me to share my faith. The second is pray that God gives me discernment. Discernment and wisdom to know when to say yes and when to say no to opportunities. Proverbs chapter 3, the next chapter after the, what I just read a minute ago, says in verses 5 and 6, says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, which is in every decision, in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Usually, when we face a decision, we, feel, we see an impasse. We see a, a, a left or right. And what this verse is saying, what Proverbs and the wisdom that comes out of Proverbs is saying that the Lord will make those paths straight. They will be clearly marked and designed for you. The third one is pray that God would close the doors I should not go through. Not only let my paths be clear, but let all of the option paths be totally shut down, blocked, boarded up, not even allowed, locked at the gate, not even, not even, the, not even the chance to go through them. And as you move forward, you're going to see, wow, God, you did that on purpose. Earlier when I was telling you about this opportunity that, uh, that the Lord closed for me, 
it turned out that that was exactly what God had planned because that church over the next 24 to 48 months, that church went through some major hardships. Now hardships aren't bad, but they went through a major financial hardship. And knowing that I was going to be the most junior, uh, lowest ranking member on the team, and if budget cuts were going to happen, I guarantee you my budget was going to be the first one cut. Very likely they were going to say, sorry, Luke, glad you joined the team, but you're out. And I knew that that would happen because I saw it happen in the church. I saw that God had, had allowed to use that decision to actually protect me from harm. So maybe the doors that God is shutting, he's doing it in order to protect you to protect you from harm. Psalms 119 verse 66 says, Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I trust your commands. So much of faith building is learning to trust God's commands and learning to trust that God knows what's best for me. What God knows is best for me. There's so many times I don't know what's best for me. But God sees through all of that. He sees through the mist, the fog, the, the, the irritation. He sees through all of that, and he knows what's best for us. And he does it because he knows what's best for us, because he's best for us and best for his kingdom and to glorify him. See, God has ordained, planned, and purposed your life. He didn't design your life by accident. He has it all planned out. He has it purposed to use you. When we begin to pray these, these dangerous prayers and we take deeper steps of faith forward, we start to see how God continues to use our faith as it grows deeper. When you're going through a season of decision-making and you begin to pray, Lord, shut down doors of opportunity, your faith deepens because you trust God more. You rely less on yourself and more on what God has for you. When you're facing confusion, frustration, and you don't know which way to go, that sh your, your last resort should not be, I should probably pray about this. Your first step should always be, I need to pray about this. Even if it's a great opportunity, I need to pray about this. I need to make sure that this is the path that the Lord wants me to take. When sharing your faith, you need to make sure that the Lord is bringing people. And let me guarantee you, He will continue to bring people. The opportunities will expand and abound more and more than ever before for you to share your faith. So in these two areas, continue to grow your faith by adding these two dangerous prayers to your life. Lord, let me see the opportunities to share my faith. And Lord, close down doors that I should not be going through. Pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, as we look at your word and it's full of stories where you, you uh, the whole Bible is, is full of stories where you are in control of everything. From creation to the resurrection and everything in between, Lord, you have ordained every single thing along the way. After you rose again and were lifted up into heaven and the disciples went out and began planting churches all over the world, Lord, you were in that. Lord, we want to be part not only of your will, but we want to be part of your greater plan that you have for our lives and for the lives of those around us. Lord, you know the opportunities that will happen in our life tomorrow, even later today and next week. Lord, I pray that you would bring before us friendships, relationships, members in our community, workmates, schoolmates. Bring these people to our attention so that we would have the faith and really just the guts to share what you've given us. Our life was not meant to be lived alone, but our faith was meant to be shared. Lord, in the same way, when we look at opportunities for, for business, for investments, for decisions on whether to move abroad, to become an OFW, to stay local, to build a family, whatever those decisions are, Lord, I pray that you would let us see the right decisions by closing the other and the wrong decisions. Lord, help us find clarity. Help us find wisdom, like it says in Proverbs, like it says in, in Psalms. Help us continue to be ready, like you wrote to Timothy, to constantly be ready in every season. And Lord, when we do this, we do it for your glory, not for our glory, not for our personal benefit, not for a Facebook post or an Instagram post, but Lord, we do it for your glory. In your name we pray, amen.